Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Central Europe. I hope everybody is doing well, staying productive and positive. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Jainil. Good to see our members in the class. Hi, me too, Shaikh. Fraser Beck, nice to see some of our regular students as well. Hi, Rangana. Uh, students in this class, we are looking at IELTS speaking part one. Some questions about uh, the weather, uh, which is uh, good to know for the IELTS, of course, and even for everyday English conversation. Now, these materials uh, are presented to you by aehelp.com. For academic IELTS help, please visit us there, join our premium package. For the general outs, check us out at g-i-e-l-t-s-help.com. Now, this is a speaking class, everyone, so make sure to speak and repeat. So speak and repeat. Say what I say and uh, repeat the questions. Copy my intonation. I'm speaking with a West Coast North American English accent. Okay, um, I'm from Canada. Uh, however, it's kind of false to think of accents as Canadian accents. Uh, there are several different Canadian and American accents. You'll find people in Vancouver, Victoria, speak very similar English to people in Seattle, uh, which is the States just down south from us. Uh, we're all kind of this West Coast uh, style of English all the way down to San Francisco, Los Angeles, even San Diego. All right, um, so students, uh, if you have questions about the exam or our products, you can always send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com. You can get our exam books uh, from Amazon, search for AE Helps Academic IELTS or GE Helps General IELTS. Uh, this week, we are having classes all the way till Saturday, again today, uh, speaking part one. Tomorrow we'll have reading uh, and listening and then uh, we'll have more listening, writing and speaking in the week. Now, uh, before we get into our speaking questions, I'll leave those here for now. Uh, again, I want to remind everybody that you can practice your English speaking 100% free on our websites. I'm going to show you that now, okay? So uh, this is our academic IELTS website here. Of course, we have an app for it also. Uh, it's the blue background. To get the premium package, you can click that big red button, or you can click this green button to get the free course, try it for free. Now, once you do that, you can log into your student account by clicking, of course, your My Student account. And for this, I'll just darken up the screen for us a little bit so you can see what's going on because it will be a bit brighter. Okay, um, so once you're in your My Student account, you'll have a tour of the course. There are lots and lots of goodies in here, computer-based practice exams, over 100 hours of video lessons. And here you can see this um, student partner speaking and that's totally free everybody can use that so you have to accept the uh, terms which basically means that you're going to be polite with other students and then once you have that it'll open up in a new page and you're going to find some students in here I see there are some of you in here right now so you'll find others in here uh, currently uh, we have these four people in here. I think Fraser Beck is actually in our live class as well. Maybe Sammy also, maybe not. Uh, anyway, when you open this window, keep it open. And then um, you can click on uh, the blue uh, button here to start text chatting, uh, video chat, audio chat. Okay. And also uh, when the page opens up, so it's kind of like Skype or WhatsApp. You can video chat just the same. And um, also, you will have IELTS speaking scripts that you can choose from. So you can click on one of these. I just clicked on objects and then uh, you get a whole bunch of IELTS questions that focus on objects. Okay, and we're always adding more and more questions. Now, this is 100% free for you to use. So many people on our channel ask, you know, how can I practice from home? 
uh, what can I do? Well, this is what you can do, okay? You can go to your My uh, Student account, uh, you click on Student Partner Speaking, and then uh, open up one of these scripts, and uh, you can start talking with uh, somebody who is in here, okay? So I'll just choose a friend, and of course, be polite, and that's absolutely free. And I see there are people trying to chat with me right now, but I'm sorry, I can't chat with anybody who's trying to contact me because I'm teaching a live class. I think it's Oluwapelumi who's trying to start a chat with me, but that won't work because, of course, I'm busy with this live class. So I'm going to close this up so uh, we don't get distracted by students who are wanting to chat with me. Um, all right, everyone. So this is our uh, general IELTS uh, website here, gieltshelp.com. It's the same idea with this website, focuses on general IELTS. Um, the speaking is free for students on both of these sites. So make sure everybody uses this, okay? Um, all right. Ah, there you are, Tunde. Adayami. Yeah, so you're trying to reach out to me. I see that. I see that, okay? Um, try to reach out to the other students as well, okay? I'm happy that you're all using it, okay? All right. Uh, Sarav Deep, I did start the class, okay? For people who want to practice speaking, this is really useful. So this is a part of the start of the class, all right? Um, I can uh, teach you through YouTube as much as possible, but at the end of the day, you have to speak, okay? All right. So um, that is where you can practice, all right? Okay, Tunde, I hope your speaking goes well tomorrow. Make sure to practice online uh, today, if you can, through the website. All right, everyone, so let's get into some of these uh, questions. The speaking section, uh, it's uh, 12 to 15 minutes. You will sit face-to-face -face, uh, if you're doing the live version, uh, which is the usual version, and uh, with a native speaker. Uh, and it will be, of course, a private interview. They will record it. For marking purposes. So if you're not happy with your score, you can ask to get it re-evaluated uh, and that's why they're uh, recording it. So the examiner will greet you. The examiner will say, uh, welcome to the speaking interview. My name is Adrian. Please take your seat. Uh, this is the IELTS speaking exam. May I see your identification? So give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. And remember students, when you type in your answer into the chat, also say it. So if you type in, uh, yes, of course, here's my passport, please take a look. Uh, say it while you type it. Uh, practice your touch typing, okay? Jack Hongir, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much for that. It's very nice of you. All right, um, Kyber Moman says, yes, absolutely. Here you go, this is my passport, which I used for registration. Very nice, okay? Janet? Uh, Kurbanova says, yes, certainly, here's my passport, which I used to register. Uh, please have a look. Janet, notice my correction there, which I used to register, not used to my registration, but used to register, or used for my registration, not to, okay? Um, Juwan says, yeah, sure, it's my passport, take a look, okay? It's my passport is a bit awkward, Juan. I would say, here's my passport. Please take a look. Okay. All right. Those are good. So lots of different ways to say this. Make sure you're fluent. Don't just be like, yeah, here. Okay. That works as long as you can show fluency right after. But I would definitely recommend showing fluency uh, right away. So uh, even with this first sentence, don't overdo it. So, you know, don't speak for two minutes giving your passport to the examiner. That's awkward as well find the happy balance, but definitely show some fluency, okay? So yes, of course, here is my passport that I used to register for this exam. Um, please take a look. Also, I think that when you uh, say this nice full sentence right away at the beginning, it helps to kind of gain confidence. So if you're feeling really nervous at the start, uh, by saying this full sentence, that will help you to kind of calm down and be like, okay, I, I got this. I can speak English. Uh, I know full sentences. So um, using 
just remember this little tip here, okay? So using full sentences for this question and the next, which you'll see here in a second, uh, is a good idea because it helps you gain confidence early in the interview. Okay, so definitely I, I highly recommend showing this fluency uh, right away in the beginning. Okay. All right. And, and of course, the next question uh, will be, uh, what is your full name? So what is your full name? Uh, of course, again, be polite and give a nice, complete answer here. Okay, so what is your full name? Kurush, good to see a member that I don't usually see in the class here. That's great. Uh, Murasa Baraki says, my first name is Murasa and my family name is Baraki. Anyhow, uh, you can address me by my nickname, which is Sweetie. All right, it's a nice nickname, Murasa. Um, anyhow is okay, Murasa. Uh, I would actually say it as in any case, in any case, it's a little bit more polite than anyhow. Okay. Anyhow is quite colloquial. All right. Uh, Sarav Deep says, my full name is Sarav Deep Singh and you can call me by my nickname Sarav. Um, yeah, you can call me by my nickname Sarav. I take out the and again, these are just really tiny nuances of being overly colloquial. Okay or being more and more polite. It's really feeling the language. Uh, Hina Arshad, our member, says my given name is Hina and my family name is Arshad, so you can call me Hina. Okay, nice, Hina, yeah. So by your first name, right? Very good. All right. Shankar Panchal says, my full name is Shankar Panchal. Uh, you can call me Shankar. That works. Okay. Mona says, my first name is Mona, and you can uh, please call me Moni. Uh, Mona, a little correction there. Uh, also, Mona, if you do have a family name and it's on your passport, make sure to say it because the examiner will be looking at you and then looking at your passport, looking at you. So, um, they're matching what you say with what they see on the passport. Okay, so my given name is um, Thomas and my surname is Johnson. Uh, please just call me Tom for short. Okay. Thomas often abbreviated to Tom. Uh, Tom is a short form for Thomas. It's also a nickname for Thomas. It's a short form as well. Uh, so you can, uh, say this, uh, surname. It's another way to say family name. Family name is kind of American English. Surname is kind of British English. Us Canadians, we like to use both. We'll say family name or surname. Uh, so just repeat after me. What is your full name? My given name is Thomas and my surname is Johnson. Please just call me Tom for short. Okay, all right. Uh, showing that fluency right away. And again, not overdoing it. And hey, uh, especially if you feel really nervous, uh, and you, it's very visible to the examiner, uh, they might actually ask you this question to try to calm you down a little bit and ask you, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? So if you get this question, it's a common question when we greet somebody or meet somebody, uh, then again, be confident and answer in a nice uh, full sentence answer. Uh, Kyber, our member says, I'm feeling a bit nervous and excited as well because it's my first time to take this test and I'm hoping to do well. Kyber, I believe you've seen that in one of our previous uh, 
speaking videos, which is great. I'm happy that you're uh, learning from that. Students, when you learn these phrases and expressions, make sure to practice them and use them so that you're natural when you're using them, okay? Flower Sun says, well, I'm quite nervous and excited about this speaking examination. However, I'll try my best to control my emotions and stay focused. Uh, really nice, Flower Sun. Uh, that second half, just a couple corrections. Uh, emotion, we usually use it in the plural, okay? So control my emotions, right? And you're actually saying two, nervous and excited. So emotions usually in the plural. Um, and stay focused, uh, we use the uh, past participle there, stay focused uh, on the exam, okay? All right, so Swati says, I feel quite nervous today as I'm taking this IELTS exam for the first time, and I have a lot of hope to study abroad after achieving a good score. Nice, good fluency, okay? I hope everybody is speaking and repeating, okay? As I mentioned before, it's good if you're typing, but please do express yourself orally. Uh, say it nice and loud. Be confident. Practice confidence, okay, students? Uh, you can practice confidence, okay? I'm quite excited about this exam, and I'm also feeling confident as I have put in hundreds of hours in preparation for this test over the past six months. Okay, um, so uh, repeat after me, everyone. How are you feeling today? I'm quite excited about this exam and I'm also feeling confident as I've put in hundreds of hours in preparation for this test over the past six months. Good. And again, students, you should practice months before your IELTS exam, okay? It's not a good idea to start practicing for your IELTS exam a couple of days before, a couple of weeks before, unless you have really good English skills. You're basically a fluent uh, user of English and you commonly um, use verbal and written communication, perhaps at work or at school, you're a teacher. Uh, then if you prepare one or two weeks in advance, it's probably okay. You just need to do a few practice exams, learn a couple of key strategies, and you'll do okay. But if you're not that teacher, okay, and if you're not um, using English all the time, then definitely do tackle the IELTS exam well before you sit the test. Otherwise, you're going to waste money. It'll be a disappointment and so on, right? So uh, make sure to do at least three to six months before you need it. Okay, especially for people who are planning to study abroad because you're not really just studying for IELTS, but you're also studying for your university or college where you're going to be using English, okay? And you're not just studying English, but you're also studying confidence. Confidence is something that you can study, okay? The more you practice, the more confidence you build and you can practice being confident, okay? So practice confidence in your speaking. Uh, this means force yourself to make eye contact with your speaking partners, speak loud, and don't stress too much about mistakes, okay? Uh, think about speaking confidence like a three-year-old child. Okay. Don't worry too much about how you say it. Just get it out. A lot of students get really anxious and nervous about their pronunciation and maybe misusing a word 
or making a kind of an awkward grammar mistake, and then they freak out and panic and fall apart at the seams. Uh, that's not good, okay? You want to be confident. It's okay to make mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. There is no such concept or uh, such manifestation as a perfect speaking, okay? Nobody speaks perfectly. It's not really uh, something that exists. All right, uh, one more uh, question here that the examiner might ask you just to get you feeling a bit more comfortable. What do you plan to do after this exam? So what do you plan to do after this exam? Go ahead, everyone. Give me a nice full sentence for this one, okay? Uh, Vishal Budhiraja says, well, today was a great day. I've spent the first half of the day with my siblings. Uh, for his wedding anniversary party and post lunch, I'm here with you for my speaking exam. All right, um, that's before the exam, right, Vishal? Uh, what do you plan to do after this exam? What do you plan to do after this exam? Okay. Abhishek, our member, says, well, after this exam, I'll go home and change clothes. Uh, which makes me uh, feel a little bit stress-free. Uh, also, um, probably late evening, I'll go for dinner with some friends and family. Nice, Abhishek. A couple of slight grammatical mistakes, but overall, a good idea. So you plan to get changed. Uh, that will help you ease some tension, unwind from the exam, and then late in the evening, go, with, go for a dinner to celebrate your potential success with friends and family, right? Uh, Sammy, our member, says, after this exam, I'm planning to go to a movie, which I booked last week, uh, with my wife, just to relax and disconnect from the stress of this exam. Uh, very good, Sammy. Sammy, remember, and this is for everyone, when you use ing, always take the word verb be, okay? So, I am planning, I'm planning. I-N-G always takes B. I-N-G always takes B. It's kind of a rhyme that we teach in um, uh, low intermediate English lessons to keep reminding students that you have to combine the B verb with the progressive form always, okay? So be careful about that, students. Faizobek says, certainly I will likely be mentally drained once this exam concludes, so I plan to do an activity which is relaxing and entertaining, perhaps go to the theater with some friends. Okay, nice. That works for Izobek. Again, a couple of corrections. Uh, students, I'm always correcting your comments in real time. So uh, make sure to repeat. And um, you can always catch the time uh, stamp. Right now, I corrected for Izo Beck at around 22 minutes in the video. So you can write down 22 minutes. Adrian corrected me. Check later on. Make yourself a little note. Okay. Remind yourself to do that. It's great practice. It's a great way to fix fossilized mistakes. All right. Omar Ashraf says, of course, I will take a long deep breath after finishing this exam uh, and I'm going to go to the gym to get a workout and uh, build some muscles, be a little bit active. Okay, Omar, not bad. Some good ideas there. Going to the gym, uh, building some muscle or muscle toning um, and uh, also take a deep breath, exhale all the stress of the exam. Uh, careful, Omar, the way that you say that, it has to be natural and accurate. So it's okay to say these kinds of complex ideas. Just make sure that you can uh, say them accurately and clearly, okay? They can be a bit tricky to express. So uh, what I recommend is early in the exam, use English that you're 100% sure of so that you're giving a good first impression and that you're accurate, okay? Um, all right. What do you plan to do after this exam? I will take a deep breath and exhale some stress. After that, I'll go home, 
get changed and do some fun, relaxing activity like go to the theater with some friends. I've been meaning to watch the new Pixar animation that just came out. All right. Okay. Um, so just a reminder again, this is a tip. All right. Uh, for the first few questions, it is a very good idea to use uh, English that you know is 100% accurate so that you make a good first impression. Do not get too fancy or unique. It's not a good idea. You can do that later. You'll have a chance to do that in uh, part three anyway. Part three will force you to be unique because the questions are quite intricate and detailed as well. Okay. All right. Repeat after me. What do you plan to do after this exam? I will take a deep breath and exhale some stress. After that, I'll go home, get changed and do some fun, relaxing activity. Like go to the theater with some friends. I've been meaning to watch the new Pixar animation that just came out. Okay. Um, here I'm giving a specific idea. Okay. Um, but I'm not using very complex language. I am including some present perfect, all right, I've been, and definitely learn your contractions and your perfect tenses, use those. Native speakers use the present perfect, the progressive form constantly, and we use contractions constantly. These will add band scores, okay? So I'll, I've, I'm, these are all very, very useful, okay? I'll, I've, I'm, I'd, these are your contractions. Make sure that you learn and use these with your nouns and your subjects, okay? All right. Now, the examiner at this point will say something like, okay, uh, let's talk about the weather. So they'll introduce the topic of part one. Let's talk about the weather, okay? All right, here we go. How often does it rain in your city? Now, these are some very common questions that you could come across in real life as well. Talking to a native speaker, they're good to learn. Uh, learn to answer these well, professionally, showing high level of communication. Uh, so don't just give simple answers like, ah, eh, not so often. Uh, I live in a dry city. Okay, eh, it's not terrible, but you got to express yourself more. Remember, they're trying to mark you here. So the more you give them, the better it is, okay? All right, Alex, Joseph says, I live in the southeastern part of India, so it's raining cats and dogs here most of the time. Sometimes uh, heavy rain makes life extremely difficult, although people here are habituated to this climate. Okay, that's, some, that's a nice uh, answer. Um, there's a, when it's really heavy rain, and you live in the kind of jungle-like area, um, there's an expression, it's called a torrential downpour. Okay, torrential, torrential, downpour, okay. It's very heavy rain in jungles or jungle-like areas. They're called torrential, torrential downpour. Downpour, you notice it's one word, means a very heavy rain. Okay? All right. So again, uh, lexical resource, right? Of course, if you can uh, use the words torrential downpour to express the type of really heavy jungle rain that you get, in your area, the examiner will give you more points for a uh, lexical resource, okay? Nigheim Un says, I live in a tropical area, therefore it rains quite frequently, especially in the north. I would say about four to five times per week. It actually rained heavy last night around 11 p.m. Very good, Nigheim. I love how you answered. 
explained, gave an example, and included some quantitative information. I can really picture what's going on. So Nick Haim, I'm guessing you're living in Vietnam, right? Judging by your name. And um, it's good to mention that. So I live in a very tropical area. Uh, Vietnam is mostly a tropical rainforest, so it rains uh, frequently, especially in the north. I would say about four to five times a week. Actually, it rained heavy last night at around 11 p.m. Very good. Okay, be specific, students. Rimshaw Classes says, nope, it doesn't rain much in my area. Due to global warming, the sea change in the temperature and timing of the seasons can be seen. Therefore, rainfalls are uncommon. Uh, students, be really specific. Okay, be really specific. All right. So, um, in my... city of Victoria it rains quite frequently I think about 170 days of the year this part of the world is one of the oldest temperate rainforests so there is much precipitation in fact it was raining from about 9 a.m. to midnight yesterday okay All right, so that is my hometown, although at current I'm in Budapest. Uh, my hometown is Victoria, which is West Coast uh, Canada. It's uh, just beside Vancouver on Vancouver Island. For those of you who are not sure, it's a beautiful part of the world. It actually rains less in Victoria than Vancouver or Seattle. Uh, Vancouver gets about 220 days of rain per year, so we get a little bit less in Victoria. Uh, Seattle gets even more. So that's why they call Seattle the rainy city in the United States, the rainy city. All right, little side anecdote there. So just repeat after me. How often does it rain in your city? In my city of Victoria, it rains quite frequently. I think about 170 days of the year. This part of the world is one of the oldest temperate rainforests. So there's much precipitation. In fact, it was raining cats and dogs from about 9 a.m. till midnight yesterday. Yeah, one of you used that uh, expression, cats and dogs. It's basically an idiom, which means a downpour. Okay, cats and dogs. If you say it's raining cats and dogs, um, you're basically saying it's a downpour. So downpour, the technical way, cats and dogs, that would be the idiomatic way to express a heavy heavy rain okay there are lots of different uh, words that we use for rain and, and of course that's not surprising because the UK is a very rainy part of the world as well I'm sure many of you have heard that in England and London and other parts of the UK there's lots of rain so of course in the English language we have lots of expressions and idioms and vocabulary for the rain okay all right um, next question what do you like to do when it is sunny? Short question, but it's a conditional, hint, hint. So do use the conditional here. What do you like to do when it's sunny? Le Pouge says, in my city of Abu Dhabi, it rains occasionally. It only happens during the end of summer and beginning of winter and vice versa. Okay, Le Pouge, that's for the previous. That's okay, all right? Uh, Flower Sun says, when it's sunny, I enjoy studying uh, surrounded by nature with sunlight because it makes me feel comfortable. So I learn faster. Just last Friday, I spent the day in the park on a bench uh, with my friends in a study group at the school garden. Okay. All right, Flower Sun, I saw the second half later there, but that's good. 
Okay, a couple of corrections there. Uh, Kyber says, when the sky is clear and the sun is shining, I love to sit on the beach beside a pine tree in my yard in order to get some vitamin D, uh, soak up the sunshine for about 30 minutes. Okay, nice, Kyber. Good. So you like to do a bit of uh, sun tanning, really, uh, where you can soak up the sun and get some vitamin D. Good for you, Kyber. All right. Let's see. Omar Ashraf says, that's an interesting question. Um, all right. Check that. That's an interesting question. Uh, since it's often sunny, I like to walk around town uh, so I can lose some weight. Also, I like to bring some um, necessities home. Uh, Omar, you're using a lot of wood. I would like to, but this is a real condition, okay? Uh, students, be really careful. When you see the word when, okay, right away you can see that that's a real condition, okay? So the conjunction when indicates a real condition, so be affirmative and do not use uh, wood. Okay, that's awkward. If you say, if it's sunny, I would do this, I would do that. Mm, it's very awkward to answer in an unreal condition to a real condition. So when you hear a real condition in the question, your answer should definitely contain um, a real condition, okay? And the best way to do that is just use when in your answer. Don't get too fancy, especially in part one, okay? Making awkward mistakes in part one, it's not a good way uh, to start the speaking interview. So you don't want to do that, okay? Whenever, um, whenever is another way to use the real condition because it includes when, right? You're just adding the ever part. It's just kind of the same as saying when with a little bit of emphasis. So uh, whenever the sun is beaming down on Victoria, I like to go out for hikes in nature as the forests come to life with the sounds of birds and it's a great way to get fresh air and stay fit. I just went for a lovely hike with my friends uh, this past uh, Saturday. And it was a beautiful day. All right. So uh, repeat after me. What do you like to do when it is sunny? Whenever the sun is beaming down on Victoria, I like to go out for hikes in nature and the forests come to life with, as the forests come to life with sounds of birds. And it's a great way to get fresh air and stay fit. I just went for a lovely hike with my friends this past Saturday, and it was a beautiful day. All right. That's how you do it. Uh, now, you'll notice, of course, that I'm also making a connection here, right? So the question was about how often does it rain in my city? I answered that. Now the question is, what do I do when it's sunny? So I make the connection to my city, especially because I live in a rainy city. So we really enjoy the sunshine uh, when uh, the clouds part and give way to the sun. So uh, I make that connection between the concept of I'm still in my city, okay? All right, next question. Let's keep rolling here, students. And again, for those of you who are finding this a little bit fast or too challenging, don't worry, just do your best. Write down new words 
Repeat sentences that you can as best you can. If you miss some words, that's okay. And remember, this video is recorded. So about an hour after the class, you can come back and watch the video again and practice these sentences. Here we go with the next question. And again, speak and repeat. Okay, don't just uh, uh, type in the chat, but speak and repeat. How do you keep yourself cool on hot days? So how do you keep yourself cool on hot days? Alex Joseph says, well, I use ice packs and take cold showers on extremely hot days. Uh, sometimes I eat spicy foods. Why? Alex, give me that explanation. Spicy foods make me sweat, which help me feel a little bit cooler from the inside out. It's true. People eat, drink hot tea and eat spicy foods because it helps them feel cool. It basically tricks your body into thinking that it's even hotter than it is, making it work more to stay cool. So it's a good trick to actually drink hot tea. I know a lot of people in India do that. They drink hot tea on hot days and that will make them feel cooler. Okay. So interesting. It's a good strategy. Uh, Shiro Dijin says, uh, thanks to technologies that help me all the time. I can keep myself cool with the air conditioner Samsung 3500 that's uh, in my home. After four hours of study, it's really relaxing to turn that on when it's 40 degrees out. Okay, Shiro Jidin, good. Yeah, I added a little bit more detail, some more quantitative information, but you have the right idea. Technology is helpful. Air conditioning systems, ice cube makers, right? Refrigerator, uh, sure. Uh, Saswati says, I usually drink lots of water, approximately 15 to 20 glasses a day to keep myself cool as I live in a desert climate characterized by heat during the day. Yeah, that's nature's way and the, the most natural way to stay cool. Drink lots of water. It's a very, very good idea. Alek, our member, says, apart from that, all right, I think Alek, you said something earlier, so I'll find that in the chat. Uh, let me see it. There we go. Alex says, I prefer to stay indoors in an air-conditioned environment on a hot day. Apart from that, I take frequent cold showers and uh, practice a courting type of breathing technique that helps my body stay cool. Okay, some type of a breathing technique. Yeah, I know dogs cool themselves through breathing, so yeah, why not humans, right? Luckily, we have sweat glands. They don't certainly helpful for us. Gurjant Singh says, well, I really do a lot of different activities on sunny days, especially in winter. I play with my siblings in the garden and also I go outside with friends. Gurjant, I think that's for the previous one. That's good. Anatoly says, I like to swim in a cool pool on really hot days, so I feel better. Anatoly, use the question and identify and quantify it. Okay, Anatoly, you'll get a better band score. So at least put in the phrase on hot days or on really hot summer days, okay? So um, when the temperature is up in the high uh, 30s and it's a scorcher of a day, I keep myself cool by drinking lots of water, staying in air-conditioned rooms as much as possible and finding some shade under a tree. Uh, fortunately, there is a large pine tree in my backyard that shelters me from 
the sun. All right. So uh, here is my answer. Again, getting a little bit creative. Of course, students, I'm always pushing you for that high band nine, giving you examples for that and uh, practice for that. So repeat after me. How do you keep yourself cool on hot days? When the temperature is up in the high 30s and it's a scorcher of a day, I keep myself cool by drinking lots of water, staying in air-conditioned rooms as much as possible, and finding some shade under a tree. Fortunately, there's a large pine tree in my backyard that shelters me from the sun. <laughs> some of you are probably laughing, going, high 30s? What about the 40s or 50s? Uh, Victoria doesn't get that hot. Victoria gets rarely up into the mid-30s. We consider those very hot days, although the sunshine in Victoria is very strong. So sometimes when people come from Saudi Arabia to Victoria, they say, wow, it's the first time I got a sunburn or a suntan in Victoria because the sun is so strong. It's not so hot, but the sun is really, really strong. All right, uh, let's go to the next question. Here we go, students, getting into some unreal conditions. Unreal conditions. If you could make the perfect weather, what would it be and why? What would it be and why? If you could make the perfect weather. Okay, let's see what you come up with. Flower Sun says, if I could make the perfect weather, it would have to be more breeze and have a little sunlight. This weather could help people feel comfortable and release after a hard day at the office. Rutvik. Gondalia says, if I could make the perfect atmosphere, it would be sunny and the temperature would be around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius because I'm quite livid. Uh, I'm, I live in a quite a hot nation, so I prefer cool temperatures. Yeah, okay. All right. Uh, careful with the end there, Ratvika, with the spelling, but that's a good answer. Okay, let's see what else is coming up. Uh, Marios uh, GR says, the ideal weather for me would be a sunny day at 25 degrees Celsius as the sun is not so strong and it's warm enough to go to the beach for swimming. Very good, Marios. A couple of corrections there, but good overall. Paya Basak says, provided that I could make the perfect weather, it would certainly be uh, springtime with lots of blooming flowers and the temperature around 25 degrees. All right, so spring weather, flowers in full bloom around 25 degrees. Nice. Toad Don't Do That says, if I could make the perfect weather, I would make it like autumn weather all year round. And what is that, Toad? What is autumn weather for you like in your country? Okay, is it a bit cool, a little bit windy, rainy? Some people like the rain. I have a couple of friends who really like the rain. I like the rain. Not always, but often. Nick Haim uh, says, well, um, my dream weather would be something cozy, uh, to be specific, kind of a cool temperature ranging from 10 to 12 Celsius with uh, strong sunlight, uh, which would give me a nice warm feeling. Okay, so... Given that I had some sort of divine power to control the elements, I would make the weather around 22 degrees Celsius. 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 Yes, Celsius, around 22 degrees Celsius with a gentle breeze and slightly overcast. This would provide the perfect atmosphere for ultimate comfort to play sports outside like basketball 
and football. All right. In fact, Victoria does get this weather does get this type of weather from late May until uh, late September. All right. So uh, repeat after me. Here we go. If you could make the perfect weather, what would it be? Why? Given that I had some sort of divine power to control the elements, I would make the weather around 22 degrees Celsius with a gentle breeze and slightly overcast. This would provide the perfect atmosphere for ultimate comfort to play sports outside like basketball and football. In fact, Victoria does get this type of weather from late May until late September. Uh, divine power is kind of like a kind of like a godly type of power, godlike type of power, okay? Divine power. Uh, elements, uh, the weather, another way that we refer to the weather is the elements. The elements are considered the weather as well, okay? Wind and earth are the elements, fire. All right, next question. Have you ever seen snow? If yes, where? This is our final question, students. Give me your best one. Have you ever seen snow? If yes, where? Ricky says, I've seen snow in Europe and on TV. Yeah, good answer, Ricky. Most of us have seen snow on TV, I'm sure. All right. I like it. Nice. Full sentences, students. Answer. Explain. Example. Rutvija says, unfortunately, no, I haven't seen snow as I live in India where snowfall, snowfall is very rare and it's only in the northern regions, especially, of course, in the Himalayas, right? If you're in India. Sarav Deep says, yes, I've seen snow last year in my neighborhood, a state. Himachal, because my uh, country does not get much snow. I went there with my family for a picnic last year on winter vacation. Very nice, Sarav Deep. So you went specifically to see and explore snow. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a good idea, uh, everyone, to try to see snow nowadays as much as possible because snow is getting more and more rare everywhere in the world. Okay. Muskan Rana says, yes. I've seen it. I remember last December on vacation, I went to Jammu Kashmir with my family and some friends. It was really one of my, the best memories, and I'll never forget it. Very nice, Mushkan. I'm glad that you got a chance to see snow. Snow is quite a magical part of nature. All right. Min Shuugi, our member, says, I first saw snow last year when I started studying abroad in Japan. Before that, I was living in Vietnam where it just doesn't snow except for in a few northern villages. Very good, man. I'm glad that you got to see some snow in Japan. Yeah, northern Japan definitely gets a lot of snow. Um, all right. Murasa says, yes, just last year in December in Kabul, which is the capital of Afghanistan, I've seen snow. To be honest, it was my first experience, and I really enjoyed it a lot with my cousins. Yeah, global warming is definitely bringing snow to some unusual places around the world. Um, <laughs> as a Canadian, <laughs> I've seen lots of snow. <laughs> In fact, I'm an avid uh, skier, so every winter... I spend a fair bit of time playing in the snow. I consider myself quite lucky as snow is a very magical part of nature. Now, it's present perfect. We're using present perfect here because present perfect is... Uh, used when we emphasize having an experience or not having an experience, okay? Um, I've never seen the Taj Mahal, for example. 
I'll get you back here in just a second. My camera just took a little snooze near the end of the class here. Um, so I've never seen the Taj Mahal, but I, in real life, of course, I've seen it in movies and on TV, but I plan to see it uh, sometime in the future, okay? Uh, so again, use the present perfect uh, for um, expressing experience, okay? It's really, really important. That was my daughter, by the way, and she's seen snow as well. I took her skiing last year for the first time at the age of three. Canadians start skiing and skating at around the age of three. So um, it's a big part of Canadian culture. So here we go, students. Uh, repeat after me. Have you ever seen snow? If yes, where? As a Canadian, I've seen lots of snow. In fact, I'm an avid skier, so every winter I spend a fair bit of time playing in the snow. I consider myself quite lucky as snow is a very magical uh, part of nature. All right, um, students, that is our speaking session for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to focus on reading and listening. If you like this video and you want more videos like this with me, um, then definitely check out uh, Academic IELTS, aehelp.com. Join the premium package. Over 100 hours of uh, HD video lessons there for you, pre-recorded lessons, of course. And uh, for General IELTS, G-I-E-L-T-S help.com, okay? So that's General IELTS. Lots of videos there for you as well. Of course, we have tons of practice exams uh, and uh, interactive courses and much, much more. And you can practice your speaking for free with other students. No tricks, nothing, just free speaking on both of these websites. So check that out. You are very welcome, everyone. It was a great class. Lots of fantastic answers. I can see lots of improvements from our regular students. So keep going, keep it up everyone. And I will see you tomorrow. Remember, you're all brilliant, smart, smart people. So believe in yourselves. Much love to all of you from Budapest. Bye for now.